Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com. I am also the medical author of the two books Focused Neurology and Exam Oriented Clinical Neurology. We are continuing with a series of lectures of Prime Neurology. There are 50 episodes of Prime Neurology and if one listens to all these 50 episodes of Prime Neurology, they would have acquired a good knowledge of Neurology. We are on the Prime Neurology Part 10, the 10th episode. There are totally 50 episodes in Prime Neurology. We are on the 10th episode of Prime Neurology. Stroke Part 7 Subarachnoid Hemorrhage Subarachnoid Hemorrhage Excluding head trauma, the most common cause of subarachnoid hemorrhage is a rupture of an intracranial sacral aneurysm. Other etiologies include bleeding from a vascular malformation, example arteriovenous malformation or dural arteriovenous fistula, and extension into the subarachnoid space from a primary intracerebral hemorrhage. Some 85% of cases of subarachnoid hemorrhage are caused by saccular or berry aneurysms arising from the bifurcation of cerebral arteries, particularly in the region of the circle of villus. The most common sites are in the anterior communicating artery 30%, posterior communicating artery 25%, or middle cerebral artery 20%. Approximately 2% of the population harbor aneurysms and 25,000 to 30,000 cases of aneurysmal rupture producing subarachnoid hemorrhage occur each year. The rupture risk for aneurysm less than 10 millimeters in size is only 0.1% per year. For unruptured aneurysms, the surgical morbidity rate far exceeds the percentage. The clinical presentation Sudden severe headache often with transient loss of consciousness at onset and vomiting is common. Bleeding may injure the adjacent brain tissue and produce focal neurologic deficits. Example, a progressive third nerve palsy usually involving the pupil along with headache suggests posterior communicating artery aneurysm. In addition to dramatic presentations, aneurysms can undergo small ruptures with leaks of blood into the subarachnoid space known as sentinel bleeds. So how do we grade scale for subarachnoid hemorrhage? Grading scales for subarachnoid hemorrhage. We have Hunt Hess scale, we have World Federation of Neurological Societies WFNS scale. Hunt and Hess scale grade 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Grade 1 is mild headache, normal mental status, no cranial nerve or motor findings. Grade 2 is severe headache, normal mental status, may have cranial deficit. Grade 3 is somnolent, confused and may have cranial nerve or mild motor deficit. Grade 4 is stuporous, moderate to severe motor deficit, may have intermittent mm -hmm. reflex posturing and grade 5 is comatose reflex posturing or flaccid. Likewise, WFNS scale grade 1 is GCS score of 15, no motor deficit. Grade 2 is GCS score of 13 to 14, no motor deficits. Grade 3 is GCS 13 to 14 with motor deficits. Grade 4 is GCS score 7 to 12 with or without motor deficits. And grade 5 is GCS score of 3 to 6 with or without motor deficits. Initial evaluation of subarachnoid hemorrhage. Non contrast CT is the initial study of choice and usually demonstrates hemorrhage if obtained within 72 hours. Lumbar puncture is required for diagnosis of sub suspected subarachnoid hemorrhage if CT is non diagnostic and the diagnosis is suspected. Xanthochromia of the spinal fluid is seen within 6 to 12 hours after rupture and lasts for 1 to 4 weeks. So, the investigation of subarachnoid hemorrhage. First, we take an emergency CT head. 
if it shows subarachnoid hemorrhage refer to neurosurgeons or re resuscitate with nimodipine 60 mg if the emergent ct scan is negative which is seen in the less than 10% of subarachnoid hemorrhage we have to do lumbar puncture csf after 12 hours there will be blood and xanthochromia traumatic lumbar punctures do not cause xanthochromia in that specimen so xanthochromia means it is subarachnoid hemorrhage Traumatic lumbar punctures do not cause xanthochromia in that specimen. If CT and CSF at 12 hours are negative, the patient has not had a subarachnoid hemorrhage. Cerebral angiography is necessary to localize and define the anatomic details of the aneurysm and to determine if other unruptured aneurysms exist. Angiography should be performed as soon as possible after the diagnosis of subarachnoid hemorrhage. ECG may reveal ST segment and T wave changes similar to cardiac ischemia caused by circulating catecholamines and excessive discharge of sympathetic neurons. A reversible cardiomyopathy producing shock or congestive heart failure may result. Studies of coagulation and platelet count should be obtained with rapid correction indicated if SAH is documented. Aneurysm repair. Early aneurysm repair prevents re-rupture. So there are two forms of treatment, endovascular treatment and surgery. The, but the International Subarachnoid Aneurysm Trial ISAT demonstrated improved outcomes with endovascular therapy compared to surgery. However, some aneurysms have morphology not amenable to endovascular treatment and therefore surgery is still an important treatment option for some patients. The medical treatment closely follows serum electrolytes and osmolality. Hyponatremia, cerebral salt wasting frequently develops several days after subarachnoid hemorrhage and supplemental oral salt plus IV normal saline or hypertonic saline may be needed to overcome renal losses. Anticonvulsants are sometimes begun until the aneurysm is treated. Most experts reserve this therapy, however, only for patients in whom a seizure has occurred. Blood pressure should be carefully controlled while preserving cerebral blood flow in order to decrease the risk of re-rupture until the aneurysm is repaired. All patients should have pneumatic compression stockings applied to prevent pulmonary embolism unfractionated heparin administered subcutaneously for deep vein thrombosis prophylaxis can be initiated immediately following endovascular treatment and within days following craniotomy and surgical clipping hydrocephalus severe hydrocephalus may require urgent placement of a ventricular catheter for external csf drainage some patients will require permanent shunt placement deterioration of a subarachnoid he hemorrhage patient in the first hours to days should prompt repeat CT scanning to evaluate ventricular size. Vasospasm The leading cause of mortality and morbidity following initial rupture may appear 4 to 14 days after the initial hemorrhage leading to focal ischemia and stroke. The treatment with calcium channel antagonist nimodipine 60 mg per oral 4th hourly improves outcomes perhaps by preventing ischemic injury rather than reducing the risk of vasospasm. The triple H therapy. What is triple H? Hypertension, hemodilution and hyperolemia. So hypertension, hemodilution, hyperolemic therapy, triple H therapy. Cerebral perfusion can be improved in sym symptomatic vasospasm by increasing the mean arterial pressure with vasopressor agents such as phenylephrine or norepinephrine and intravascular volume can be expanded with crystalloid augmenting cardiac output and reducing blood viscosity by reducing the hemocrit this so called triple h therapy hypertension hemodilution and hypo hyperolemic therapy is widely used if symptomatic vasospasm persists Despite optical medical therapy, intra-arterial vasodilators and angioplasty of the cerebral vessels can be effective. So these are the wonderful concepts of subarachnoid hemorrhage. 
if you have enjoyed it please like and share the link as i said in the beginning of my lecture there are 50 episodes of prime neurology and if one listens to all these 50 parts of prime neurology they would have acquired a good knowledge of neurology the other important concepts of clinical neurology i have put in a book called exam oriented clinical neurology written by written by me dr s srinivas published by white army this book will be very useful for students appearing for clinical neurology exams if interested this book could be purchased the other book i have written is focused neurology written by me dr s srinivas published by cbs publishers and distributors this book contains all the theoretical aspects of neurology in a point form so this book will be very useful for students appearing for viva and orals this book is available online from all leading booksellers including amazon so if interested this book could be purchased online i hope you have list enjoy listening to these wonderful concepts of subarachnoid hemorrhage if you have enjoyed please like and share the link but please subscribe to my youtube channel dr srinivas medical concept which is india's leading neurology educational youtube channel and my webpage dr srinivas concepts thank you bye